Hello and welcome back everyone we weeb online and today i'm going to start a new series what if naruto was an undercover agent part 1 if you enjoy this video please give it a big thumbs up and to watch more videos like this subscribe to my channel and turn that bell notification on so you never miss an upload now wasting no more time let's begin mr kyuubai the man at the door said as he stood leaning against the door frame He wants to see you. Naruto looked up from his seat on the comfortable sofa. He glared at the man through the red glasses. Unsatisfied, he folded the paper he had only gotten halfway through. Slowly pushing himself up from the chair, he let out a frustrated groan. Seeing his boss wasn't very high on his wish list at the moment. Not after his latest job, no. He quickly brushed off his pants in case any dirt had stuck to them before passing the man who was smirking at him. Walking through the long corridor, His hand quickly checked if his gun was still in its place next to his hip, as if its weight didn't already confirm that. It was still there, loaded and ready, in case something was going to happen. God, he hoped not. Naruto reached the door and the two guards opened it up with stern faces. If he was asked to identify them, Naruto couldn't do it. He had never seen them in anything other than the black suits and the black glasses. He couldn't see a single tattoo or piece of jewelry. He walked inside the dim lighted room. The walls were covered in red wallpaper. Curtains closed over the closed windows. A heavy smell of nicotine and alcohol pressed against him like a thick wall, and he resisted the urge to cough and turn around. On either side of him stood two more guards, and in front of him a big desk made of oiled mahogany. A dark brownish red color lit up by the only light source in the room. A small lamp in the corner. On the other side of the desk, his boss sat. hands folded together and placed on the blank surface next to and slightly behind him stood kabuto looking at naruto with an emotionless face kyuubai kun the man in front of him said please take a seat naruto watched the golden eyes trying to find out what exactly was going to happen as he sat down on the soft chair almost immediately the two guards that had been standing at the door moved up behind him each placing a hand on one of his shoulders the weight pulled him down and he was forced to lean back in the chair Oh god. Ah, uh, how nice. The black-haired man drawled. Now we can talk. Naruto crooked his head to the right, slightly leaning back with his head further. What can I do for you, Orochimaru? The man named Orochimaru slit his eyes. He didn't like when his underlings called him by name, but of course, this Kyuubai did. The stupid blonde-haired, blue-eyed idiot. Orochimaru had almost smelled trouble with his tongue as the young man came to him the first time. But since he was so damn lovable not to mention his strength and his amazingly technique with a gun, the martial arts, and the strategic thinking, Kyuubai was the ultimate underling or right hand even if Kabuto hadn't already had that position. Oh well, people came and people went. Boni noticed something off some nights ago, Kyuubai. He saw you with two police officers. Naruto smirked as he tried to break free from the two big heavy hands as one of the thick fingers found his pulse on his neck. He realized that was something he probably wouldn't see through and looked directly at Orochimaru. "Yes, boss," he said, as calm as anyone can be before a storm waiting. "There had been a robbery near my neighborhood. Of course, I was the first one they checked. It wasn't me though. We did other things that night." Naruto was perfectly aware that his heart wasn't racing faster as he lied. But the look Kabuto gave him as he leaned forward, the light catching his glasses. He whispered so quiet not even Naruto was able to listen. Orochimaru smiled dangerously as Kabuto finished. Kabuto is pretty sure that you're lying, and he has good grounds for that. The pale man put one hand out towards Kabuto and Kabuto gave him his sword. While Kabuto liked to kill his victims with poison and experiments, Orochimaru was a very big fan of cutting off body part after body part. Then he sometimes gave them to Kabuto. He also wanted something to play with since he didn't get to do someone that often. Orochimaru quickly drew the sword, pointing it into his neck making a hole in his skin. Naruto could feel the blood trickle down to be collected by his shirt. Don't you think so, Uzumaki Naruto? And all hell broke loose. Almost the second Orochimaru pronounced the last vowel, all the windows that were placed around the room exploded. Naruto had already taken down one of the big gorillas behind him by hitting him with his elbow in the man's groin. The other one reacted immediately by smacking him in the back of his head, sending Naruto flying over the desk and Orochimaru. Orochimaru who was currently defending himself against the police force that had jumped into the room dressed in black and shooting down everything that moved but damn you all if you touch the blonde the correct order had been Naruto crashed into the wall which he left rather soon since Kabuto was hot on his trail having a borderline psychopath chasing him made him a little jumpy his legs felt like jelly and he freaked placing a bullet between the flunky's eyes Kabuto stared him right in his eyes as he slumped down over him 
Naruto pushed the body off, trying to roll under the desk to get out of the way of his fellow workers shooting. But as soon as he tried that, the shooting stopped with a high command, as the chief police entered the room from the door. When Naruto stood up, he could make out two dark forms lying on the floor in the corridor, and he figured they had been two of the guards. The other two were secured with their hands behind their backs, one of them was shot in the knee, and the other in his shoulder. As they walked out, the latter gave Naruto a dirty look, and the blonde almost felt sorry for the fellow he had violated between his legs. But he shrugged it off as he walked over to his real boss, who was poking at Orochimaru with a broken piece of a chair. Get up, you won't die from that. Orochimaru snarled angrily as he stood up, both his arms hanging useless against his body. Sarutobai Asuma made a gesture with his hand, and some officers came and took care of him. Before he was pushed out of the door, he pressed his face close to Naruto's. You will regret this you little fucking disgusty. That will be all, thank you, Asuma said, and the snake-like man cursed several times before he was out of sight. Naruto and Asuma stood quietly as they waited for the sounds to stop. Good job, the chief inspector said as they finally did. I was unmasked. Naruto, we got them. Naruto nodded. He had been working undercover in Orochimaru's group for over six months now, and it actually felt really good to finally be done with them. No more sleeping in someone else's bed. No more helping with acts that would probably end in murder. No more ass-kissing for a disgusting dude in his fifties. Finally, Naruto would get to go home and live a normal life suited for a 17-year-old teen. I have to talk with you at the station, Asuma said at last, and Naruto nodded knowingly, even though he had no idea what the chief had on his mind. You are not serious. I'm afraid I am. Naruto was currently pacing back and forth in the brightly lit office. The daylight here shone in, and the windows were opened. Naruto had got his own clothes back, some of them, when he had complained loudly how tight the leather pants clung around his crotch in front of the whole force. Asuma had smacked him in his head, but given him some jeans and an orange hoodie for him to be comfortable in. He still wore his expensive French shoes however, clashing horribly with his other casual clothing. Naruto slammed his hands down on the desk as he hung over it, frustrated. Why? Asuma sighed as he picked up his cigarettes, putting one in his mouth and lighting it. Naruto wrinkled his nose in disgust, muttering something about stupid old man smoking in the presence of an underage boy. Because you are a 17-year-old boy who works with the police and you practically know everything about Orochimaru, his underlings, his business and his power. Of course you are an easy and attractive target for the other underground groups. At the word underground, Asuma pointed down with his thumb towards the floor. Naruto let out a string of curses that could make the dead shift in their graves. So I have to stay hidden. Asuma for fuck's sake. I want a life. I want to go to school and hang out with some friends and actually be normal for once. That was the fucking deal. Naruto grabbed a photo frame which showed Asuma's son and wife. Not that one. Asuma saved the picture and gave Naruto an ugly vase he had got for his birthday from the department some years ago, and watched amused as the blue object was crushed into the floor. That would take some time to clean up. And for your information, he said as Naruto huffed angrily, I intend to keep that promise. Naruto looked up at him, with a face that asked and why in the world would you bother to do that you fucking son of a bitch. Asuma shook his head. If the boy wasn't Minato's son too, he would have kicked the brat out a long time ago. He took a brochure from his desk and gave it to the blonde teen who looked at it with a big question mark on his face. Welcome to Deciduous Forest Special University. <clears throat> For affluent young men and women. Special. Like. Retarded. Naruto asked when he wasn't even able to take his eyes off the folder with its neat text. No. Special like an unconventional education. The school doesn't follow the other school systems. In DFSU, teens matriculate the year they turn 15 and stay until they turn 18. It's a boarding school, so you'll have to live there. Of course you will have your own room, your own shower and toilet. Since you are already 17 you will not concentrate on a specific track. Instead you will have free time so you can keep up with your police training. You are not allowed to tell the teachers or the other students why you are there, where you come from, your real name, what you do for your living and other things like that. Your identity will be completely unknown except to the principal, the vice principal, and the owner of the school. When Naruto thought about it, it didn't sound that bad. He would make friends, he would get to go to school, a rich school, surely a good one with comfy beds. He would learn some new things and still be able to come back to the police force when he was done. Free food. Of course. I'll do it. Asuma nodded and put out his cigarette. Naruto folded the brochure and put it in his jeans pocket. He was just about to leave the office to collect his things from home, as the police chief cleared his throat. Oh, I forgot something. Naruto half turned back in the doorway, raising his eyebrows as he waited. 
Your new name will be Nanohara Shizuka. Naruto only looked at him as the words slowly sank into his head. During that time, Asuma had already lit a new cigarette and was halfway through it. Isn't that a... Yes, it is. Asuma breathed out a big air of smoke from the corner of his mouth. You will be wearing a girl's uniform, Shizuka. One minute, and then two. Asuma put down the cigarette and put two big fingers in his ears. The scream followed by the deadly curses could this time not only make the dead people stir, it would wake them up. Naruto leaned back in the backseat of the cab. It was really early in the morning, and normally he would have been dead asleep at this time. Instead he was being taken to his new school, a school he didn't really know how he would feel about. He sighed, and laid a hand on the single bag next to him. Since he couldn't use his normal clothes, the bag only contained his most important belongings. He gave the driver an extra angry look, and the man pushed his foot down harder on the pedal. Asuma had told him that it would be best if he didn't know where the school was, and now Naruto had no idea where he was. After driving for a few miles they made a right onto a nameless road. The cab continued driving further into the forest, and then, out of nowhere, two big white pillars were seen, fastened together with a white arch that went over them. Naruto leaned forward to look out of the front window of the car, and saw a large building at the end of the road. The trees suddenly disappeared, revealing a sprawling garden filled with flowers. The yellow cab drove around the roundabout, and stopped in front of the stairs, from which it quickly sped away directly after Naruto stepped out of the car. At the top of the stairs two women waited for him, and Naruto assumed that they had to be the principal, and the vice principal. Asuma had told him that they would welcome him and get him into shape. The woman with blonde hair and two pigtails and an astonishing bosom reached out a hand to greet him. Welcome to the deciduous forest special university, Miss Nanohara, she said with an entertained smile on her lips. Her grin growing bigger as she continued. I hope you will have many pleasant experiences while attending here. Naruto growled and ground his teeth as he followed them up the stairs and into the big, beautiful school. Mr. Sarutobai told you about the rules you have to follow, right? Tsunade asked as she measured his body to see what size uniform he should wear. The vice principal Shizune sat on the other side of the room, securing some stuffing into a sports bra to prevent things from popping out. That would be embarrassing. Really embarrassing. Naruto could see it before his eyes. Oh, excuse me, that's one of my boobs. Care to give it back? Yes, yes he did. Tsunade nodded and he winced when she came to his waist. He was terribly ticklish. Good, then I won't tell you again. But I hope you understand how important it is for you to follow them. The school, its owner and myself, do have responsibility for you, and if you screw this up, you will be in deep shit. Naruto took a minute to wonder how this woman ever became the principal of this high-class school, but decided to drop it instead. Damn if you aren't skinny enough to wear a medium. The big-breasted woman murmured more to herself than to Naruto. He was aware that he was skinny. Not too skinny, no. But years of training a lot, and years of living alone with only a small amount of money sent to him every month made it almost impossible to be really healthy. Of course he looked better now than he did when he was 13, and his muscles were now more visible. But still, that had been one of the reasons he had been called the fox when they didn't use the name Kyuubai in Orochimaru's hideout. He had the body of a fox, and he was almost able to move as gracefully as one. Almost, Tsunade walked over and picked up one of the three boxes that had been standing on her desk when they arrived. She opened it, and a cute girl's uniform could be seen. Shizun came and gave him the bra, and he pulled it over his head, and then put on the white shirt that came with the uniform. Naruto looked down at his body, and then it struck him, like lightning from a clear sky. He was really going through with this. He was really going to live like a girl for the next nine months. It was scary. Together with the white shirt came an orange skirt. The vest was yellow, the back of it was made in a shimmering fabric, making it look almost gold, with orange patterning. There was a thin black necktie that matched the black shoes, which he put on over his sock encased legs. The socks reached all the way up to his thighs, making him feel less naked. To top it all of there was an orange bolero jacket with three buttons, which cut two inches below his breasts. On the whole, it was a really nice uniform. But when Naruto looked at himself in the mirror, he looked hideous. I don't look like a girl at all. Tsunade smiled at him, it isn't the clothes that make the girl. Trust me, Shizuka, we've only just begun. She picked up another box and gave him a white skirt. Put this on underneath the other skirt you have on. It will make it look like you have some kind of hips. When I was in your age, I had to wear one of those 24-7. A giggle filled the room, and Tsunade turned beet red from Shizune, who tried to hide her laugh in both of her hands. During the time Tsunade tried to make Shizune understand that she had been hipless when she was young, Naruto pulled on the second skirt. 
It actually looked like he had some kind of hips, but it wasn't enough. Even though his body might look girlish, his face didn't. He swirled around to Tsunade and Shizune, devastated. Help me, he hissed. Both of the women smiled evilly, before approaching him with a black kit. One and a half hours later, Naruto watched himself in the mirror. His hair was longer with the help of hair extensions. Apparently Asuma had stolen one of his locks and sent it to the principals, so they could find the right color. He had to ask Asuma about that later. The soft curls reached down to his boobs and were fastened some inches beneath his normal hair which had grown rather long during his time at Orochimaru's. The natural tan skin of his face was covered with a thin layer of foundation, hiding the three scars he had on each cheek. He had brown liner around his eyes, and the eye shadow was orange, to match both his hair and school uniform. His eyelashes had also been darkened with mascara. Shizune had put some robe on his cheeks, and his lips were painted in a pinkish color with a tint of apricot. Naruto watched his appearance with ocean blue eyes and tilted his head to his right. It wasn't that he was sexy or anything, but he actually looked nice. He looked like a girl, a fine young girl. The three of them could all agree that it could have been much worse. Tsunade cleared her throat and pulled three small bottles from a bag and gave them to Naruto. Those two are ladies' perfume and ladies' deodorant, because we can't have you smell like a man, even though it's sexy. The last one contains pills you have to take once a week to prevent your beard from growing. Naruto nodded and sprayed some perfume under his chin. The second after he'd done that, someone knocked on the door. Ah, uh, it must be the all-class represent. Show him in, Shizune. Shizune walked over to the door and a young man with black hair collected in a braid that fell down his back entered the room. His eyes were as white as winter on a snowy day, and he wore the same uniform as Naruto, though the boy's uniform was dark blue and gray instead of orange and yellow. He bowed his head at Tsunade and Shizune. Good day to you, Principal Tsunade, Vice Principal Shizune, he said, and then turned to Naruto. I assume you are the new student, miss. Naruto almost rolled his eyes about how perfectly polite he was, but resisted the urge and smiled instead. Nanohara Shizuka, Hyuga Neji, the other of the two presented himself. It's nice to meet you. Naruto sighed and turned back to the two women and gave them a thankful smile. Thank you, Tsunade and Shizun, he said gratefully, I see you if I have any questions. I'm sure you can ask me for anything you need, Miss Nanohara, Neji interrupted, and Naruto felt the urge to puke this time. God, where had this boy been his whole life? Naruto shook his head and followed Neji out of the door, leaving the only safe place he had until this point in the school. I'm going to show you around the school area now, if that's alright with you. Naruto nodded even though Neji already started, with or without Naruto's acceptance. This is the main building, and was the first built. This place contains the principal's office, and also the assembly hall where we meet at the beginning and ending of each school year. But since the school year began a month ago, you don't have to worry about that yet. This building also contains the theater, where the kids who study drama show their productions. We can take this way out, he said and showed Naruto out of the back door. When Naruto came out of the first building, he was met with an expansive of greenery, surrounded by buildings in every size. Kids his age were walking around together, sparkling in blue and orange, probably going to their classes or taking a break. He realized he had watched them too long, when he discovered Neji was a good bit away from him. He jogged up to him, only to find that Neji hadn't stopped talking. And on your left you can find the building where all the business classes take place. If you ever want to find me during school time, you will probably find me there. Naruto stopped listening again, and watched the surroundings instead. So this was the school. Even though he was scared to death, he couldn't help but feel excited. Here, he would make new friends, learn stuff and as he assumed Asuma thought, feel safe. Naruto didn't know what he could expect to happen this year, but he was keen to find out. Being the only son of a police hero was a weight on his shoulders. Not only had it made him join the force when he was 15, as his father already had given him the right education and experiences, but it had also kept him away from making regular friends and living a normal teenage life. Now he could do that. Well, he looked down on his tits. Almost normal. Join any club you want, and we have everything from the chess club to football. Damn he was hungry. Neji, Neji, he broke the other boy off. Where is the cafeteria? I'm hungry. One of Neji's eyebrows twitched, and he slowly turned around to face Naruto. Miss Nanohara, have you been listening? I told you where the cafeteria was only five minutes ago. Naruto shrugged his shoulders, and Neji let out a sigh. The black-haired boy opened his back and pulled out a can of coke. I was supposed to give this to Sasuke, but I assume you can have it instead. 
Naruto happily took the can and opened it. I'll show you your dorm. Swallowing eagerly, Naruto followed Neji as he walked down a path to a bunch of white buildings. This Sasuke had to be close to Neji, since he didn't call him Mr. Whatever his last name was. He showed the way into the closest one, and Naruto found himself walking down a beautiful corridor. The wall-to-wall -wall carpet was dark red, and the room was surrounded with a dark wooden panel. The wallpaper was dark blue, and chandeliers hung from the ceiling. Neji seemed satisfied with Naruto's reaction. Your room will be room 109, and if you want to ask me something, you can find me in room 118, further down in that direction. He said pointing. Here is your schedule with all your classes, and the key to your door. Your luggage is already in your room, and I hope you will have a wonderful time at the Deciduous Forest Special University. Neji let out a small smile, and Naruto smiled back. Maybe this bloke wasn't that bad after all. Neji was just on his way to another room, when he was stopped by the girl. He was about to turn back when a cold aluminium can was pressed into his cheek. He took it and looked dumbfounded on it. I saved half of it for Sasuke. That was his name. Neji nodded and smirked, waving as he went away. Naruto sighed happily and turned to his own door. He put the key into the hole and opened the door. The first thing he did was to kick his one and only bag and curse quietly. Although, the cursing cut off when he saw his room. The room was beautiful, likely the most luxurious Naruto had ever been in. The wall-to-wall -wall carpeting was green, as were the walls. Where the wall met the light wooden ceiling, an orange border went around the room. The curtains were also orange, and Naruto wondered if Asuma had told someone that he really liked that color. There was also a big bed in one of the corners, and on the other side stood a yellow couch. A desk was placed right under the window, equipped with a brand new laptop. A TV that at least looked new was placed in front of the couch. The bathroom wasn't a disappointment either, and he really did have his own shower and toilet. Naruto went back to the room and flung himself onto the bed. He opened the cap of his bottle and took one of the pills to prevent his beard from growing. Yes, this would be good. At least that was what he could feel in his gut. Not many rooms away, the son of the ultra-millionaire and late chief of the Uchiha Cooperation sat, writing a paper for his history class, bored with his life. It wasn't that he didn't get on well in school, actually he did really great. But nothing new ever happened, and the fact that he was stuck here for another two years didn't make it any better. Uchiha Sasuke was in fact really bored with his life, and now that bastard Neji was minutes late. He was just about to look really pissed, when a soft knock was heard, and Neji entered the room, looking at a can of coke as he walked in, as though something about it was really interesting. Sasuke raised an eyebrow when Neji sat down on his bed, when he knew very well that Sasuke didn't like people in his bed. As if Neji could feel the unsaid question, he looked up a smiled. Something Sasuke knew was, not as much as his own but still, rare. She saved half of it for you, Neji said at last, amused and surprised at the same time. Beep beep, beep beep, beep beep. Naruto groaned and his hand found its way out from the blanket, grabbing a hold of the alarm clock to find the button that stopped it. The beeping sound ended, and Naruto slowly opened his eyes. 740. Yeah, he had time. He would take a shower, brush his teeth, put some clothes on. He could do that in 20 minutes. Better get up. He thought as he turned around in the bed, facing the green wall, I could do that in 15. Not even having opened his eyes properly for the whole morning, Naruto began to slumber again. The blanket felt warm and cozy against his skin, and he scratched his stomach, satisfied. Five minutes more. Then he could get up shower use the bathroom brush his teeth and put on his skirt. Skirt skirt skirt. His eyebrows furrowed. Wait. Shower toilet teeth makeup hair perfume school uniform. Fuck. Sasuke was bored. As usual. He listened to his teacher going though something about credit and debit. He had written down the two words but after that he had stopped listening. He sat in the row closest to the windows, watching the other buildings. The yard was empty since everybody had lessons at this time of day and Sasuke wondered if he would be able to sneak out sometime later, take the bus down to the city, irritate his brother by gambling away some of their money, if he had had access to any of that. No, instead he was stuck here. Something suddenly caught his eye, and he saw a girl on the grass. Not only was the grass off limits, but the girl had also forgotten her jacket. A sandwich was stuck in her mouth, and she couldn't seem to get control of her books. She was doing all of this at the same time as she was running at an incredible speed. Sasuke looked at the clock that hung over the white board. 817. The blonde girl dropped her books on the still wet grass and Sasuke smirked, his day saved. Sucker. Naruto practically collapsed on a bench when he came out of the cafeteria, carrying a tray with food. 
The lesson he just came from had been one of the longest he had ever had, almost four fucking hours. And since he had still been terribly sleepy when he got to class, he had fallen asleep right away. When he was later awakened, by the sound of the other students collecting their things, he had only written down one word on his paper. He thought it said Columbus, but it was hard to tell since his drool had smeared it all out. He had to find one of his fellow classmates later to ask about the notes. That is, if he recognized any of them. Picking up his chopsticks and breaking them apart, he took a mouthful of ramen, slurping it inside his hungry mouth. The sandwich he had found in his refrigerator this morning hadn't been that satisfying, and he didn't even want to think of who put it there, or when. He put the drinking straw down in the carton and begun slurping on the drink, which tasted like oranges. Naruto really had to set the alarm clock earlier tomorrow, unless he wanted this day to repeat itself. Suddenly he was brought back from his thoughts as a large hand bumped into his shoulder, startling him and making him throw away the carton in pure consternation. Yellow lemonade spraying over the table. It also made him choke, and he looked angrily up at the intruder. Three boys his age looked down at him from above, all three of them with brown hair. The one with shaggy brown hair and red triangles down his cheeks looked amused. The chubby one with lighter brown hair looked hungry. And the last one, who had a black brown hair and a high-placed ponytail looked utterly bored. Sorry, red triangle boy said, looking sideways as if he was trying to find an escape route away from Naruto's glare. Even though they were outside in the schoolyard, we were wondering if we could sit here. Naruto looked at the table and shrugged his shoulders, but when Triangle Boy sat down, he snatched his milk carton from him. Hey, give that back. Naruto laughed and held it outside his reach, opening it up as the boy almost laid over him to take his property back. Faster than the speed of light, Naruto pushed down the straw he had still been sucking on in his mouth, drawing in a mouthful of its contents. The light brown-haired boy chuckled as he opened a bag of chips, and the ponytailed guy sighed as if it was all too troublesome. Triangle boy pouted and sent Naruto a hateful look. Naruto only laughed, but remembered to lighten up his voice slightly before he began to talk. It's your fault. Try not to sneak up on someone like that next time. The other teen snorted. If you hadn't been in another world the whole time and not reacting when I first called you, we both would have been happy. Naruto took a look at both the boy and the carton, grabbed the other's drinking straw to his mild protest, and with a swift move punctured the carton with another hole perfectly. Smiling, he held the thing with two straws down in it in front of the other, who couldn't take his eyes from it. The lipstick less straw is yours. During the time they ate, Naruto learned that his milk partner, Aka Triangle Boy's name was Inuzuka Kiba. He was the same age as Naruto himself and was studying medicine together with his girlfriend. He really loved dogs, and Naruto had been put through torture when he showed him all of the pictures of the puppy he had at home. Well, puppy, puppy my ass, Naruto thought. Wouldn't be surprised if that beast is even bigger than me. Ponytail guy was named Nara Shikamaru, and he had been forced to attend this school by his father, who in turn had been forced by his wife. Troublesome, Shikamaru muttered, but Naruto saw in the look in his face that in the end, he didn't dislike the school that much. The chubby one was a Kamichi Chaoji, who was studying to become a chef and was at the school for the same reason as Naruto himself. Free food. When he later looked at his clock and realized that he was late, again, he waved the three boys goodbye and was happy to have made his first friends at this school. An envelope was lying on the floor when he later arrived to his room. It was a plain envelope, a white one with only one word placed on it, Shizuka. Naruto opened it and read the cryptic letter. Meet me at the front gate at 11 p.m. Need to talk to you, eh? He wondered what Asuma could have on his mind, but that wasn't something he could figure out. He just had to wait the remaining hours. Naruto's eyes went to the books that had to be read through for tomorrow. Bugger, Saruto by Asuma lit a cigarette as he waited for his young friend to come to meet him. He had already been waiting for 20 minutes, but he wasn't worried. Naruto always overslept, and it wouldn't be an uncommon thing for him to pass out in the evening. That had happened several times when they had been watching some criminal. In that way Asuma thought it was a shame that he had sent Naruto here. Naruto wasn't only the son of one of the best cops in police history, no. Naruto himself was really good, and Asuma hadn't been working with him for almost half a year. And it was about to become longer. He missed those nights together, sitting in a car. The only thing that kept them warm was the car's heating system. Which, of course, Naruto had destroyed when he'd spilled his noodle soup on it. The soup had ended up as Asuma's warming system the rest of the night. Asuma sighed at his old memories and watched the road up to the school. Someone was coming his way, the footsteps almost echoing in the silent evening. He was just about to wave to Naruto when he stopped abruptly. Along the way came a young blonde girl, a nice face some would say. 
She walked directly up to him, snatched the cigarette from his mouth and crunched it under her shoe. You know what I think about smoking, Asuma. First, Asuma wondered how this girl knew his name. But when she set her determined and irritated blue eyes directly on his, the light finally switched on. No, nah. he stopped himself by coughing, Shizuka. Naruto rolled his eyes. Of course you brain dead idiot. Who else? Asuma let his eyes wander over Naruto, taking in the feminine look he had. He was cute as a girl, Asuma assumed, but a little too tall for his taste. He wondered if Naruto shaved his legs under those stockings. Stop checking me out you jerk, Naruto said and whacked him over the head. The older of the two grinned. Pervert, what did you want to talk about? Asuma's hand had wandered down to his cigarette packet, but he stopped it midway. He didn't want to see one of his angels be crushed by Naruto more than once this evening, and even that was one time too many. One of the bigger mafia groups are after you, but we don't know which one yet. We couldn't risk the phone line being bugged or a delivery service leak, but we wanted you to have this. Asuma turned back to his car, opened the door and gave Naruto a package, heavy in his tan hands. I assume you already know what it is. Naruto nodded. It was the gun he had left at home. He hadn't wanted to bring it to school, but he guessed it was unavoidable, especially since Asuma himself had delivered it, which Naruto took as a sign that most of the officers in the force were worried about him. Not that they knew where he was or what he looked like. They knew he was in danger but hopefully in a safe place. Naruto gave Asuma a grateful smile. Say hi to the others from me, he said. But Asuma wasn't looking at him. He looked behind Naruto and picked up his car keys. Someone's coming, so I'd better be going. I, I'll see you, okay. Be careful. Naruto nodded and watched Asuma drive off. Sasuke also watched as the man drove off in his car, leaving a girl behind. He was out on one of his evening walks to take a break from studying. The girl turned around and began walking in his direction. She held something in her left hand and Sasuke wondered if that had been something delivered to her by the man. Blue eyes met black once on the dark path. Her intense blue eyes shone in the moonlight, giving the girl a dangerous look on her face. Sasuke felt as though the world slowed down when she passed him, the wind from her passage sending chills up his arms. He stopped completely, slowly turning around watching her back as she walked up to the school and disappeared in the building. The next morning went better for Naruto. He was up at 6 and really took his time. He even made it to the cafeteria to grab himself some breakfast before he had his first class. But, as Naruto knew very well, days for him were never trouble-free. It started when he had his first PE class. Tsunade had sent him a notice that the rest of his school clothes, the winter jacket, the ordinary jacket, extra socks, and his PE clothes would come at the end of the week. Therefore, the teacher put him on the bench to keep score of the business boys' soccer match. The other girls were running on the track, and Naruto felt satisfied that he didn't have to participate on such a warm day. Everything was going well until one Haruno Sekura appeared. That was the first thing she said to him, along with a hello, my name is, as if Naruto would know exactly who she was by only her name. Too bad for Naruto, because he had no idea in hell. So what do you think of our school? She asked, with a smile still gracing her lips. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. He didn't know what he thought of it, but he guessed it was fine. Hiba, Shikamaru and Chaoji were nice, the teachers weren't the worst he'd ever come across, and the grounds were nice looking. You don't usually wear makeup, do you? Naruto tilted his head to the side. No, not really. Sakura seemed satisfied. Here, let me help you out. Let's stand in the sun. Naruto followed her into the sun, not really caring about the score. Sekura stopped and looked at the boys and waved to one of them. Naruto couldn't see anybody waving back. Isn't he the sexiest god you ever seen? Naruto looked at the field but didn't see anything particularly sexy. Sekura turned back to him. You should really go easy on the foundation underneath your chin, otherwise you'll have that line you have now. She smeared out the creamy border and looked at him. Sekura was just about to say better when the soccer ball came flying in their direction. In Naruto's direction, smashing right into his crotch. Two seconds went before Naruto reacted. F-U-U-U-C-K. Naruto doubled over, hands over his member as he went all the way down on the ground. The pain, it was unbearable. What fucking bastard had shot it so hard? Then it hit him. Girls didn't go through this kind of pain when they were his in there. Area. His eyes went wide as his hands left his pained area to his stomach instead, fingers digging into his sides to get somewhat away from the other pain. 
Oh my god, Shizuka, are you alright? Where did it hit you? Sekira shrieked as all the business guys slowly approached the two girls. Naruto's brain spun as he tried to come up with something good. My stomach, he croaked out, not even needing to bother to make his voice lighter. He looked up at Sekira and saw that she looked very doubtful. Your stomach. I was sure. Naruto immediately cut her off. It's, it's that time of the month. If Naruto hadn't been in such a great pain, he would have given himself a golden star for his idea. How many could come up with something like that under such short notice? Oh, good, Shizuka, Sekura said, swallowing his lie. She turned and glared at the boys. There's nothing to see here, she continued, chasing them away. Thereafter she bent down over Naruto and helped him up. I will take you to the nurse, okay? Naruto nodded. A painkiller would be great, really great. And that was how he came to be resting comfortably in one of the beds in the nurse's office. The nurse was had gone on a late lunch, but had given him the painkiller before she went. Sekura had gone to her next lesson, and Naruto was satisfied that he had missed his own. Because he had one of a hell of a good reason, he thought as he looked about the white room. Some green plants were placed in the windows, and Naruto found the room more than relaxing. White always did that to him. His head sunk lower and lower into the soft pillow, and it almost felt like he was at home in his own bed. The blonde's eyelids became heavier with each second, and soon he was dead asleep. So he didn't hear the door as it creaked open, and a dark-haired business student entered the room. Sasuke opened the door and peeked inside. Sekura had told him, after many complications since she obviously wanted him all to herself for the moment and couldn't understand why he was interested in the new not directly an eye candy girl. As she had put it, that the chick was resting in the nurse's office. The nurse's office was in fact a whole building, where most of the med students often spend their time. He had passed the nurse on her way out of the building, so he knew it was a safe card to go and check that no great harm was done. To his surprise though, the girl had fallen asleep in what he was sure had been five minutes since she got there. The dark-haired boy walked over to the bed and saw that this indeed was the same girl that had kept him somewhat less than bored over the last few days. It was the girl who had been running late for class the other day, and the same girl who had gotten the mysterious package from the dude with the car. He wondered who she thought she was, butting into his life without even trying. For Christ's sake, he hadn't even seen the girl before some days ago, and he had been in this school for a little more than two years. Maybe she was one of the youngest students, the 15-year-old ones, but she didn't look that young. In fact, she looked a little funny. Her chin was broad, and it looked like she had a strong jaw. Her eyes were big, but the makeup wasn't really applied right. Almost as though she hadn't been using makeup for that long, and her hair it was just so disturbingly bright. He would certainly recognize her from miles away, she was almost ridiculously vibrant. She was also tan, and Sasuke found himself irritated that he wondered where the tan reached. And the worst of it all she drooled. A string of saliva ran down her chin from her wide open mouth, a light snoring escaping from her. But looking at her, sleeping so peacefully, made Sasuke relax a little. He found a chair and sat down, watching her chest heave up and down. Even thought she looked a little weird, there was still something beautiful about her, something interesting in her features. Her movements fascinated him, as her hand traveled up to scratch her ear in her sleep, her mumbling as she turned around and sprawled out on the bed. The heavy breathing and the end of it when she opened her eyes, and seeing her with her eyes opened, Sasuke felt like he'd been struck. The blue looked even more beautiful in the light than it had in the dark and Sasuke could see himself in the deep orbs. Her eyes were half-lidded as she watched him, bringing a hand up to rub the sleep out of them. Damn that was nice, Naruto said, stretching his arms high up in the air. He blinked a few times at the boy who sat by his bed, looking at him with an unreadable expression. Hello. The dark haired nodded, and Naruto stretched his neck, not really interested in who his visitor was. But the boy stayed, so he guessed he had to acknowledge him. What brings you here? The other continued to watch him, then took his finger and pointed to his own pale chin. Naruto leaned closer, making the dark-haired boy lean further away from him. What? You are all drooly. Naruto narrowed his eyes before the lights went on, and then brushed his hand over his wet chin. He looked at the pillow and saw the same wet there, and dried himself off on the fabric. Sasuke wrinkled his nose in disgust. Who knew how often the nurse cleaned the pillows, and the thought of the drool drying in the white thing almost made him shudder. But instead of saying anything, he let it drop. The blonde chick turned back to him, eyes looking at him questioningly. Sasuke sighed. I just wanted to see if you were okay. I saw how hard you were hit by that ball. Naruto made a face at the memory. Luckily the pain had calmed down to nothing. Almost. He still had a pain in the back of his head from remembering it. Oh, that's nice I guess. It doesn't hurt so much anymore. Lucky me. This bloke had really black eyes. Haven't I seen you somewhere? He was sure he had. Sasuke sighed again. 
We passed by each other yesterday evening. Naruto thought about it. Yesterday. Yesterday evening. Oh, that was it. Yeah, he drawled. You're the little, sneaky night walker guy. Sasuke's eyes went wide. Sneaky. That's rich coming from you. Who was the one receiving that parcel from the shady bloke? Naruto frowned, openly irritated. He didn't want this guy to know about his business with Asuma. Like I said, sneaky. I'm not. Or so. Sneaky. This girl really grated on Sasuke's nerves as she continued to chant the word. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. A vein popped up on his forehead. The last time someone called an Uchiha sneaky they were hanged, Sasuke hissed. Uchiha, what does your name have to do with anything? Bastard. Bastard. She was unbelievable. He stretched himself where he sat, pushing his chest out a few inches, for once being able to announce who he was before someone knew it beforehand. Uchiha Sasuke, he said, proudly. One second turned to ten, until Naruto broke his vacuous pose with a smirk. You're the coke guy. She stated it like it was the most obvious fact in the world. Coke guy. What did that mean? But Uchiha Sasuke hadn't been accepted to this school because he was dumb, no. He had graduated from a private junior high school with the best score in its history, even better than his bastard brothers. You're the new girl, he identified heatedly. The impolite new girl who had drunk from his Coca-Cola. I should kill you right here and now. Naruto's eyes went wide. Why? Because you drank half of my cola. But I saved some for you. You drank from it, dope. Naruto flinched at the name. I saved half of it for you, bastard. Another vein popped up. You drank. Faces inched closer. I saved. Teeth gritted. They continued arguing until their noses were almost pressed against each other, and Sasuke calmed down. Or rather realized he wouldn't win this fight right now. Instead he withdrew, and brushed his fingers through his soft silky hair. I should leave, because apparently I'm not welcome here. And here I thought I was being a real gentleman coming and asking you how you were doing after that hit. Surprisingly, this time the lights came on rather fast. It was you. Sasuke opened his eyes, which he had closed when he was acting like a gentleman. What? It was you. This time it came out as a growl, amazing Sasuke how dark her voice could get. When she was angry, have you any idea, she continued, every word being dragged out of a heavy breath. How painful that was. Sasuke shook his head. How he cleared his throat as he realized it had came out as a whimper. How painful. Two words, Naruto growled, freeing his legs from the blanket. Painful. Sasuke's eyes sought the door as she walked closer. And the other one. Her mouth suddenly appeared right next to his ear. The last word only breathed. Run, Sasuke, realizing she was serious, was out of there in a flash, with Naruto not far behind. If Sasuke hadn't been both smaller and quicker, Naruto would have taken him down in one step. However, Sasuke had been quick enough to slam the door shut directly after him, and he bolted away down the corridor, not even registering that this wasn't how Anachiha should behave. He heard the loud slam of a body crashing into the closed door. Sasuke, not keen to see if the new girl was still able to move, disappeared into his next class only seconds after. Naruto, holding a hand over his bleeding red nose, promised himself that this was something that demanded vengeance. Naruto was still pretty angry some days later. He had been training all morning, mostly kickboxing, to calm down his temper. It had helped, but what was more satisfying was that the bastard seemed to be avoiding him. Naruto had certainly not seen him since that day, and he had been looking. He had assumed that it wouldn't be that hard to find him, Naruto had to admit, to his utmost irritation. That the bloke had been very good looking, so he was probably well known. Kicking up some small white stones on the path he continued to grumble about the bastard, when he heard a voice calling him. Oi, Shizuka, over here. He raised his head, which had been lowered and saw Kiba waving like an idiot, together with the always bored Shikamaru and the always eating Chouji. He had spent the last couple lunches with the three guys, and he was glad that there were at least some good people in this school. Not like that nut-cracking son of a... I have ramen for you, Shizuka. Chaoji yelled. Naruto's thoughts were soon forgotten as he bounced over to his three friends. When he arrived, Chaoji continued, We learned how to make it today, and I thought I'd save it for you. The blonde knew that this was very unusual for Chaoji to do, since the youth ate most of the food he made himself. Naruto gladly took the bowl with its warm contents. Thank you. Chaoji looked happy when he began to eat, and even happier when Naruto said that this was the best ramen he had ever eaten. His smile only faltered when Naruto continued, saying that the chubby boy was doomed to cook for him for the rest of the year. Kiba had stuck two drinking straws in a carton of orange juice, which he and Shizuka drank from, and Shikamaru showed him a cloud that looked like a rabbit. Naruto couldn't have been happier. That was until a dark mop of hair disturbed his beautiful day. 
Uchiha Sasuke, as he had told Naruto his name was, came walking up the same path Naruto had only minutes ago, his laptop under his arm. He had almost passed Naruto, when he suddenly turned his head in the blonde's direction. He almost stopped dead in his tracks, a smirk gracing his lips. He walked up to the quartet, standing before them. Naruto's eyes turned to slits. Well, if it isn't the dobe, Sasuke said. Says the bastard, Naruto retorted. They looked at each other for a while, Naruto feeling his rage and anger welling up once again. Bastard, he said. Dobe, Sasuke said half a second later. Silence filled the air once again, except for the passing students who walked over the yard, the wind blowing in the trees and the loud sound of something splashing against blue fabric. Sasuke looked down at his uniform to find it being covered in orange juice, Naruto smirking. Oh, sorry, great Uchiha. I guess I slipped. Taking advantage on his feminine look, Naruto batted his eyes innocently. Sasuke didn't fall for it. Walking closer to the blonde, he put one hand underneath the bowl of ramen, tipping it over into Naruto's lap, soaking everything all the way down to his groin, the hot soup burning him. Naruto jumped up throwing the bowl somewhere behind him as he began jumping around. Damn it. Hot, 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 hot the though thought. Sasuke looked amused. Kiba too, although he gave Sasuke a dirty look. Chaoji looked at the empty bowl of ramen, then threw a dirty look at Sasuke, and then looked at the bowl again. Shikamaru found entertainment in both Naruto and a cloud, which looked like Shizuka as she danced around, screaming. When Naruto finally cooled down he turned angrily at Sasuke. What the fuck are you doing? Sasuke felt a slight tingle in the bottom of his stomach as he looked at the girl. She was awfully attractive when she was angry. The stray thought made Sasuke wonder how he could think that. About this stupid, stupid blonde-haired idiot. Sasuke smirked. Oh my, I guess I slipped. He drawled as he walked away, satisfied for the day. Naruto stood left with his friends, trembling with anger. He felt how red his face was with fury. And for the moment, all he wanted to do was to follow the Uchiha and strangle him. And on top of all, his skirt was ruined until he got to wash it, and he still hadn't received his extra clothes. Shizuka, do you have any idea who that was? It was Kiba who asked him, and Naruto didn't let his gaze leave the ravens retreating back as he answered him. It's such a fucking Sasuke. Kiba went silent, and next it was Shikamaru who spoke up. And you are aware that he is one of the billionaires. This made Naruto tear his gaze away, looking questioningly on Shikamaru. A what? A billionaire? Chaoji said instead of Shikamaru as he scratched himself in his head. Well, obviously all of us are rich at this school, but some of us more so than others. Sasuke is one of them, and all the other kids who live in the first building. They don't have to share rooms with other. They don't have to pay extra money for the food since the school is counting that their parents or guardians will give the school money. And they are awfully snobbish, Kiba informed him, and Naruto wrinkled his forehead. In short, all the kids were rich, but the ones who were richer had a better status. What kind of idea was that? All of them were rich bastards, except from him. But he didn't really count himself in this matter. I live in the first building. He hadn't noticed he had said it out loud until the three brunettes looked at him with wide eyes. Hell, Shikamaru didn't even look bored. You live in the first building? Tiba asked, in disbelief. Naruto nodded. Shikamaru raised his eyebrows and leaned back on the bench. Then why are you hanging out with us? Naruto smirked. Gee, I wonder, he said. They looked at each other before all four of them began to laugh. Naruto sat down and continued to spend his lunch with them. When money came and went, real friends stayed. And money had nothing to do with them. But later that evening, while Naruto was lying on his bed he thought about it. His face was clean, and he traced his fingers over the three scars on his right cheek. He wondered if he was worth living in this dorm with the other billionaires. He knew the only reason he was here was that he wouldn't have to share a room with anyone, making his cover go to hell. But still, Naruto also knew that he didn't belong here. He wasn't rich, quite the opposite. Sure, Asuma had always taken care of him, but this was not the life he had been trained to live. Asuma had taken him in when his father died, and he had stayed up until the day he turned 13. Thereafter it had mostly gone to hell, and if he hadn't been educated by Asuma he would have been a lost case. The money he had made from being able to work with the police had made his world go around. It wasn't much. This, on the other hand, was terrifying. Everything was served to him on a silver platter, and he was almost afraid of grabbing what was offered. It was all too easy. When he got into his room earlier that day, his extra clothes had been there, waiting for him. Only the fabric was something he could only long to have, the kind he would have bought to get a taste of the sweet life. And what bothered him more were Shikamaru, Kiba and Chaoji. He was happy that they were there, making him feel at ease in school, but it felt so weird. They thought he was a girl, and he had made them believe that. Lying to someone you barely know, okay. 
but he couldn't let people get too close to him. That would be too hard. Turning around in his bed, he faced the wall, and then there was that Achaha, making him lose his temper too easily. Not that he had been very good at controlling his temper, ever, but Sasuke was something else. A billionaire huh? He smiled when he closed his eyes. That Uchiha Sasuke. That Uchiha Sasuke also lay in his bed, not being able to sleep. He was thinking about the new girl. Nanohara Shizuka, Neji had told him when he asked him about her some days ago. He groaned, wondering why he couldn't get her out of his head. He smirked. She sure had guts. Sitting up in his bed after realizing he wouldn't be able to sleep tonight, he suddenly found himself staring at the half-empty can of stale Coca-Cola. Setting his feet down on the floor, Sasuke walked up to it, eyeing it carefully as if it was going to attack him. Nanohara Shizuka, huh? In one swift move, he drank the rest of it, not even making a grimace at the bad taste. Naruto knew he had to take his revenge on Sasuke. Twice the raven had abused his precious jewels, and now it was time for the rich bastard to suffer. Fuck. Naruto also came to know that thinking vengeful thoughts while putting on the mascara wasn't the smartest move. Throwing away the black thing with a curse, he quickly applied the lipstick. His makeup technique had improved a lot since the first time he tried, but he was still not as good as the other girls. Even though he was a quick learner, it was still damn hard. Too bad it was something he just had to get used to. Sighing, he put on his jacket and walked out of the door. The first lesson would have something to do with medicine. He had already taken the class several times, but he still didn't understand what the teachers wanted to teach them. Nope, things like history and physiology were way more interesting, and of course politics and how the country was ruled. That was something every policeman needed to know about. But no, Tsunade and Asuma had put medicine, as if he would need anything other than to know CPR anyway. And the worst part about it, that pink-haired chick also took those classes. Yes, he was glad that he didn't have to sit alone in the lessons. But since the incident with the football Sakura seemed to think that they had created an undying bond with each other, Naruto sighed again. He wondered who the gossip was going to circle around today. At least he had something to think about when he shut her out of his mind. Locking the door, he watched further down in the corridor as one Uchiha Sasuke did the same. Sasuke lived three rooms away from him. Naruto had first wondered why they mixed male and female students in the same dorms, but had learned quickly that one guard patrolled each corridor every night. Smirking as he saw Sasuke trying to get the key into the door he drew a hand through his hair. The raven looked up at him and smirked as well, walking towards him. Any revenge yet, Shizuka? He sneered. Naruto stopped him with one hand over his chest. It will come, Sasuke, and that is a promise. Leaving Sasuke where he stood in front of the blonde's door, Naruto left the building with the smirk still attached to his face. Yes, revenge would be sweet. And do you know what that bitch said? She said he's mine and you will never get him and I was like yeah, like he would want a pig like you. And then the damn bitch told me, me, to fuck off and I was like. Naruto nodded as he shut his ears off. Maybe it didn't occur to Sakura that he wasn't interested. Sure, she was talking about this Sasuke bloke, but he really didn't want to know about who and what wanted to fuck Sasuke senseless. And it was pretty obvious that Sakura and this bitchy thing Ino, Naruto snorted, like Sakura was one to talk, were too obsessive about the Achiha. Shutting his eyes, trying to keep the voice out, Naruto actually found himself feeling sorry for him. Thinking on Sasuke, he really had to come up with a good revenge. For as far as he knew at the moment, he could be sterile thanks to the bastard. And what was up with that I'm good looking sexy smart and everybody wants me attitude. Naruto was really sick of it, since it was written all over the raven's face every time he saw him. Glancing at the teacher and Sakura he gave up for the day, and fell asleep on the desk. It was not until a week later that he figured out how his revenge on Sasuke would go. The week that had gone by had been pretty boring, but Naruto had actually found it fun to take all the classes. He was not the smartest in the class, but it was fun and interesting to do something normal for once. The medicine was still pretty hard, but to his great surprise something had clicked inside Sakura's head and she finally came to the conclusion that he needed help. She was in fact very good at medicine, since she was studying to become a doctor. Just like the principal, she had said, making Naruto wonder why she was a principal when she was an educated doctor. And that train of thought continued when he wondered how the hell a woman like that had become a doctor. Just some days earlier she had stopped him in the corridor, asking if he wouldn't pop into her office next Friday. And Naruto had agreed to that. Even thought she acted terrible and used very bad language, she still knew about his real identity. And that was comforting. Anyhow, he had just finished his medicine homework. He had gotten some notes as help from the pink head when he felt that he needed some air. Looking at the watch on the computer, he cursed as he saw that it was past bedtime. 
Not that the guards came to check if they were asleep or something, but more like leave the room and we'll shoot you. Well maybe not shoot but damn close. Looking over to his window, he reached for it over the desk over his laptop, trying to open it. Somehow though he felt himself slip off the chair where his feet were placed. Falling downwards he saw his laptop laying quite dangerously. He got a good hold on the sides of the window. His arms trembled from the shock of both falling and nearly destroying. What he assumed was a very expensive computer when he realized his position. Naruto's right knee was placed half an inch from the thin computer, the other leg lying helpless over the sharp edge of the desk. He let out a sigh of relief and pulled up his left leg on the other side of the laptop. He was currently straddling the laptop, which gave the name a whole new meaning. Wrinkling his eyebrows he let go of the window and placed his arms in front of him, making him stand on all fours. This new position made his head appear through the window and he looked down at the ground many feet below him. His dorm was technically on the first floor, but since they had a big stair in front of it, the floor nearest to the ground was counted as a cellar. He suddenly saw something that caught his attention. Underneath his window there was a somewhat wide strip that shot out from the wall, going around the whole house on each floor. Naruto followed its path with his gaze to his left. It was placed about four feet underneath the windows, surrounding the whole building. Naruto found himself staring at the window three windows away from his. He looked at the strip again. He felt the corner of his lips tug as his mouth curved into a big evil smile. Ten minutes and forty seconds later, Naruto thought that maybe this wasn't that great of an idea as he had first thought. He was currently balancing in front of a window where a guy with black hair and green pajamas was lying, sleeping. The guy had, during the time Naruto tried to catch his breath, scratched himself in his crotch several times. The pajama was a one-piece, old and Naruto wasn't sure if he had any underwear on underneath. He cursed the guy for sleeping with his lights on. Calling on the gods and heaven for strength and patience he managed to continue. The next window was dark, and Naruto hoped that either the owner of this room was out, sleeping, or most of all, that no one occupied this room at all. It didn't look lived in. Naruto had almost lost his balance three times, but he was saved by his fingers grasping at the nearest grab-able thing. Sliding his feet sideways, breathing heavily he found himself in front of the Uchiha's window. It was dark inside, and Naruto thanked the gods for bringing the moon out on this adventurous night. Inside he saw Sasuke lying on his back, sleeping. Naruto's brain was suddenly filled with so many ideas of getting back he almost lost his grip on the window frame. He stifled a yell as he felt himself falling backwards. But all the years of training for the police force, he was fast enough to take a secure grip around the ledge again. Looking down at the ground between his legs, he almost didn't dare to look back up into the window. What if Sasuke had awakened? But Sasuke had not, to his great relief. Pulling one of his hands backwards he pulled out a small knife from the black bag that was attached to his back. He carefully pushed the knife in between the opening of the window, fiddling with the inside lock. He let out the breath he'd been holding when he heard the hook pull out of and fall down next to its secure hole with a soft clang when it bumped into the metal ring. Thank god this school had old windows. The locks probably hadn't been changed since they were made. It was possible that no one had ever tried to break into the school by the windows at all when he thought further on it. Putting the knife in his mouth, he stepped up onto the windowsill to be able to get to the lock that was placed at the top of the window. He gave it the same treatment and pressed himself to the side as he swung one of the windows open and it sure went open, filling the deadly silence of the night with a high squeaking that made Naruto's heart drop to his stomach. The window stilled, hanging open, at the same time as Naruto froze not daring to move a muscle. Several minutes went by before Naruto finally looked into the open bedroom, seeing Sasuke lying in the exactly same positions as he had been when Naruto first came. Damn this guy was a heavy sleeper, not at all like Naruto, he woke up from the slightest breeze. He felt really lucky when he saw that Sasuke's desk was placed underneath the window on the inside. The blonde boy carefully put down his foot on the wooden surface. Every movement, from the first step he took to him sliding down the desk onto the floor to the many smaller ones that took him to Sasuke's bed, sounded sharply in the otherwise silent night. Hell, he was sure that Neji who lived quite a bit further down in the corridor could hear his heavy heartbeats, because he sure did. Looking down on Sasuke's sleeping face, he took in the raven's looks for the first time. Dark silky hair framed a pale beautiful face, the pink lips that looked so soft parted as the raven breathed through them. His blanket had been pushed out of the way from the late September heat. Wondering how the bastard could look so good and inviting while sleeping, Naruto thought to himself that he should put the blanket back on Sasuke, now that the window was open. If anyone had seen Naruto when he started working, 
they would have seen the picture of a highly educated man with revenge glimmering in the ocean blue orbs. The youngest heir of the mighty Uchiha legacy stretched out his limbs the morning after. With a big yawn and a sniffle from his nose, he tried to wake up from a good night's sleep. Mornings weren't usually his forte, but last night he had slept better than usual. He had had no nightmares, hadn't woken up having to use the toilet, nothing. Sasuke was still tired, but only in the pleasant way you always are after a good night's sleep. Scratching his head he didn't notice its unusual stiffness and threw the blanket off himself. The window was open and he enjoyed the fall breeze that entered the room. It was not until he put one foot down on the floor he realized something was wrong. Terribly wrong. Lifting his feet again without opening his eyes, he put them gently back on the floor. It was. Sticky. Moving his feet a little in the wet something he sniffled again. Terrible sticky. Rubbing his eyes he looked down on the floor. His black eyes widened at the sight. The whole floor, and then he meant the whole fucking floor with carpet and all, was covered in that icky noodle soup they sold in the cafeteria. Noodles, pork and other vegetables blanketed the dark blue carpet, soaking it. Sasuke could only stare. What? With a disgusted face he stood up, trying to not step on any of the gross foodstuff, and failing miserably. He made his way to the only ramen-free zone in his room. Jumping the last way into the smaller room he let out a heavy breathe, groaning. It was too early, too damn early in the morning. Pressing on the button that would light up his bathroom, he cursed. He pressed the button several more times before he accepted that it wouldn't work. He narrowed his eyes as he looked up at the lamp over the ceiling. The light bulb was gone, which confused Sasuke very much, since he was well aware that he had had light in the bathroom before he went to bed last night. That he had had a light bulb at all when he went to bed last night. Shrugging his shoulders, he made all his business in the darkness. Knowing his reputation wouldn't take any damage from the gorgeous just woke up look he smirked as he gathered his books from his desk. Now that he had his shoes on he didn't care what he walked in. He would tell the cleaner on his way out of the building that his room needed a good one today. Sasuke stepped out of his room and locked the door. Whispers started around him, but that wasn't unusual. In fact, it was something he had to get through every morning. He put his keys back in his pocket and smiled at a girl who looked at him with wide eyes. She didn't faint this time, but he didn't feel any lesser for it. I'll make another one faint, he thought with a smirk. Making his way through the corridor, a wrinkle appeared on his forehead. This wasn't the usual reaction. Normally it was only the girls who whispered, but now many of them laughed openly at him, and some of the guys pointed at him as they clutched their stomachs, also laughing. Sasuke, Mr. Haddock asked me to gi dot dot v dot 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 Sasuke swirled around and faced his friend. His mood had gone from good to bad in only seconds. What? He snarled, but didn't wait for Neji to answer as he practically ran from the building. Down the stairs, and out into the large central yard, even more laughter was directed at him. He got some people to shut up with some deathly glares, but most of them seemed immune. His pace picked up and he looked further up the road, to find Nanohara Shizuka smiling widely at him, holding something behind her back, her grin becoming wider by the second. Oh, so you're awake now, Sasuke. Sasuke's eyes turned into slits. He didn't like that smile. Then it all suddenly came to him. Why had his floor been painted in ramen? Why was the light bulb gone? Why the hell had his window been open? When he knew damn well that he had closed it the evening before. The revenge. His hands quickly found their way to his face, feeling with his fingertips that it was covered in something. His hands then found his hair, tensing as he felt exactly how stiff it was. The revenge. What have you done? He whispered, cold shivers running down his spine. Shizuka pulled up the object she had held behind her back which turned out to be a mirror. She held the glass object in front of his face and he gasped for air. Someone really did faint that day. Sasuke himself. Sasuke rivaled Naruto's own curses as he cleaned himself off. Naruto had offered to lend him his facial stuff, and now they stood in Naruto's bathroom. It had taken much coaxing and downright stubbornness to get Sasuke into his room. But when they had come into the building and more and more people had caught sight of his new look, Sasuke had run into Naruto's room as the blondes was the closest one. Naruto was now leaning against the bathroom door, showing Sasuke what he should use. Naruto smiled a little, actually feeling sorry for the Uchiha. Fucking Zazu, Nanohara. Naruto smiled, showing all his teeth. Sasuke had actually looked good as the hornbill from the Lion King. His nose had been painted by a thick layer of Naruto's eyeshade, turning it into the bill. Naruto had also found some white paint around his eyes and blue on the rest of his face, his hair was combined in a styling way, looking like feathers sticking out from his head. Everything had been waterproof. Sasuke had been utterly adorable. Angry, but still adorable. Naruto wasn't disturbed that he though so. 
It would have been an outright lie to say he wasn't. Zazu, he hissed again. Naruto laughed and laid his arm over Sasuke's shoulders. The makeup was gone. His revenge had been the best so technically he didn't have any grudge against the Uchiha anymore. Naruto dragged Sasuke out of his room and laughed, locking the door. And Sasuke couldn't help but to turn his head away from Naruto and smile. It felt good to have Shizuka's arm around him. But when they reached the front door, he suddenly realized his hands were empty. Damn it, Nanohara, I forgot my books in your room. The girl couldn't stop laughing, not even when Sasuke glared deadly at her when she fished her keys out of her bag. Sasuke snatched them with a growl and made his way back, leaving the still laughing Shizuka at the door. He put the keys into the door and opened it, looking around for his books. He hadn't realized that Shizuka took way too many classes, because it was literally booked everywhere. When he finally thought he had found his own, he saw the name Nanohara Shizuka in it. Sighing in relief when he finally found them lying on the bed, he bumped his foot into something underneath the bed. He turned to the door but didn't find Shizuka anywhere nearby, before he dropped on the floor. It was the parcel from the other night. Sasuke knew it was illegal to open others' letters and stuff, but he only cursed his curiosity as he peeked it at the end where someone had already opened it. He rolled it out of its package, and the object was suddenly visible in his hands. It was a gun. A real gun. Not a toy, he could tell from its weight. Sasuke, did the books run away? Sasuke looked up and saw the blonde girl in the doorway, looking at him with her mouth wide open as he sat by her bed with a fucking gun in his hands. Her shock seemed to wear off and her eyes narrowed, and Sasuke felt his heart jump. He had never in his life seen anyone look at him that way. Not even his brother. Emotions flooded through Shizuka's now almost blue-black eyes. There was anger, hate, shock, and also fear. Like a prey that had been seen by the hunter. Out. The word was said so quietly Sasuke almost didn't hear it. It was not more than a mere whisper, but it sent chills through him. His hand began to tremble and he dropped the heavy gun on the floor. Get out. And that was exactly what Sasuke did. I will continue this story in next part till then we weave offline.